Hello networkers and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer where I will answer one of your questions. And this question comes from Pawan Kalyan and he has basically three questions and I talked about one of them in a previous episode. But his three questions were, which programming languages will benefit networkers? Second question, do you think SDN will affect network engineer jobs? And the third question is, is networking a support industry? Aren't there any development jobs in networking? So let's talk about those one by one. In regards to SDN, check out our video that I released last week about talking about software defined networking, the concepts, what it is, and how does it affect network engineers. So check out that video and I'll give you all the information what to consider about it and what it is. In terms of programming languages to learn as a network engineer, not really though. Just kind of focus on learning Cisco iOS and Nexus OS. That's probably what's more important is learning that. And of course, the different graphical interfaces if you're dealing with storage or with unified communications or even with firewall appliances. Get used to that. Have your experience focused around that. That's more important. I think the big part of that is what I've seen over the years and what I have definitely experienced. So I would say that probably mid, kind of like mid in my career, I did learn um, various languages, but it was a little different. For example, I was really involved in learning Perl. That was basically, um, I love Perl. I also did um, expect this was also a very big deal that I learned a long time ago. And of course, Perl and CGI and working and using an HTML interface that would work with Perl scripts and expect script, expect scripts, I should say. So what I did for that was I configured, I used Perl and expect to actually log on to all the routers and switches in the environment for the companies that I worked at to pull configurations, even to make configuration changes. So if there were like we're adding new routes, then I can just make I can just type in the new routes, use the particular scripts that I used to um, write up, and push that to all the different locations. And the great thing about that was we had uh, I could use HTML like a web interface, and if I typed in particular commands and say submit, then on the back end. It would use the Perl scripts and the expect scripts to kind of work together to actually push out that configuration and of course getting configuration backups. I also did monitoring using those programming languages. I remember I created a ticket system for the knock for a dot com company a long, 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 long time ago. And it was a lot of fun. But the thing is, there are a lot that all of the stuff that I just mentioned, the tools are there are a lot of tools that are doing that now. There are a lot of tools that can um, push changes to routers and to switches. There are a lot of tools right now where it can do configuration backups. At the time, there really wasn't a lot of great options. And uh, that's why I use those languages to help me to do my job better. It wasn't like when I was applying for jobs, I said, hey, I know some programming scripts. That really wasn't important. What was important of was do I know how to manage the network, support it, configure it, and to lead the team that was a part of. They didn't really care about the scripting stuff. That was just basically something that helped improve my job and productivity. And have I touched those languages ever since? Not at all. I haven't touched them in probably the past, wow, probably more than six, seven years because I don't need to do that anymore. And so basically, when it comes to learning programming languages, don't really worry about that. That's not something that is strongly emphasized for what companies are looking for uh, among network engineers. What's important is that you know how to configure routers, switches, uh, firewalls, voice systems, and know how to support it. That is a higher more importance than you scripting stuff for automation or other components like that.
Now, the other question about is networking a support area or is it something else like development? That's a fantastic question. So in other videos, I talked about the, the different network areas like being a network engineer, um, security, data center, voice, etc. And I, of course, talked about which ones were valuable. So def definitely check out those videos. But really, in each of those roles, probably more as a network engineering role, there are three subspecialties. So that means that if you are a network engineer, you will either be in one of these three roles. You could either be dealing with configuration and support. You might be dealing with design or network architecture. And the third is with development. So if you are a network engineer, then you're going to probably be dealing with one of those three particular subspecialties. Network support. So with network support, that deals with, well, of course, configuring your routers, your switches, your firewalls, your voice system, everything. And of course, it deals with troubleshooting and support. So if something is down, they call you and you fix it. So that's what we mean by network support. When we talk about network design, the second potential role that you could be involved in within the company, that really means designing the network based on best practices, also to consider performance, scalability, security, flexibility, reliability, network management. Thinking of those components while you are building the design so it can last and it can basically include newer solutions in the future when that day comes. And then we get to development. And that's more with the programming and scripting aspects of what a person can do. But as a network engineer, you will rarely deal with that. Now, here's, a, here's an example of what I mean by programming and scripting in some capacity. Cisco Unified Contact Center Express. That is the call center solution by Cisco. So you can go ahead and administer the entire solution by creating the different groups, call queues, everything like that. But you can also create the actual call script. And that call script has different variables that you can specify that when a call goes into the queue, you can specify how that call is handled and like things to check for or things to gather from the caller itself. All that is a particular script that happens. And that's the scripting part that I'm talking about when, I, when we say network development. Now there are other scripting components like on switches, like macros. There's some scripting aspects to it. There's also things like EEM and of course using um, TCL scripts. So you can use some of that, but as I talked about before in terms of learning programming languages, those are more enhancements of basically improving how you're doing your job. They're, they are not job requirements. I've never been in interviews or seen interview questions where they ask you, what kind of programming are you doing to your network? No, the question that they're asking about is, what is your experience with configuring and managing BGP, uh, Fabric Path, DCIs? How do you support it? That is the smoking gun that people are looking for in terms of any networking experience, not what your programming languages are. Okay, so let me wrap this up very nicely here before we conclude this video. So, Prawan's question was really great. Is this a networking support industry? The short answer is yes. Support is a big part of our jobs. That is what companies want. That is the one that is more better for job security. And I mentioned this before, when a person does network design, that is just one of their roles. You mainly do configuration, but you do a lot of support. The design stuff, the design responsibilities, that comes in once in a while. It all depends if the economy is great. When there's money to spend, then they get new designs put into place and deploy those solutions. When the economy is bad or very tight, new designs, new deployments, it doesn't happen. Support always happens. So this will always be a support industry if you're in IT. Not just networking, 
but with computers, servers, security, support is basically comes with the job. And if you're starting out, you gotta expect that support is gonna be the primary thing in your job because that's what the company really, really wants. They don't really need design work. That comes once in a while, even in larger environments. It's not a fast, pezzy, like there's so many different things you have to do for design work. Mm -mm. Configuration support, there's a lot of moving parts there. I've been in both of those rows before. There's a lot of moving parts there. And for development work, that's a nice to have. It is not a requirement and it does not do anything in terms of supporting aspects of it. Now, yes, there's particular scripts that you can do on your switches where, or your routers, for example, that if an interface is down, it will do a log event. And if that log event will, will trigger a particular event where it can enable other interfaces, so traffic could be routing through a different interface. But that's great though. But if there's an issue, there still needs to be a support aspect of it where you gotta log on to the equipment, see what's going on, calling vendors, checking cables, you know, the support role. So absolutely, this is definitely a support industry when you're dealing with IT. Stuff breaks, bugs happen, crashes happen. Technology is nowhere close to perfect. Everything crashes, your cell phone may crash, your routers may have some kind of a, a blip. That is why support is a very, very strong aspect for any person with what they are looking for. It's very interesting because I finished this video series or this episode and for the very last part of this video, I was having audio issues. I had to re-record the ending again. And I'm troubleshooting this, um, trying to figure out what, what's going on here. The audio is different in the last part of this video that I recorded. So I'm troubleshooting, I'm like rebooting the camera. I'm doing a re-recording of it. I'm checking cables. And basically the microphone just crashed. It just stopped responding. I had to reset it and it works now. That's what I'm talking about. Things just don't work the way that they should work though. Technology is not perfect. It crashes, it has bugs, it has problems. That's why support is really, really important for companies because these things will happen. And we are done with this episode. So Pawan, thank you very much for the great question. And as always, I wanna hear from the rest of you guys. So post your questions below in the comments about any question about being a network engineer or anything in the networking field and your question will come up in a future episode on this channel. So thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel. That will mean a lot. And check out our practical training on our website at routehub.net where our focus is with configuration and support. So definitely check that out. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.